Well, welcome back, and we have Tim Alexander. Uh, Tim, lots of issues to cover, so let's get rolling. Uh, this is a very momentous time in history, isn't it? Yeah, Monday is the first of the four blood moons. Uh, next week, a, a top-level conference takes place between Russia, the United States, NATO, and the coup government in the Ukraine. Uh, Russia wants uh, the regional governments uh, in eastern Ukraine to be included. Uh, today, Putin wearing a velvet, uh, a velvet uh, glove but with a very tough iron fist, has warned Europe of quote-unquote gas charges over the Ukraine deaths. And basically, uh, you have to read between the lines. He, he phrased this in a way that uh, they can't use it against him. But basically what he told NATO is, if you keep messing with Russia and the Ukraine and uh, don't back down, uh, we're going to turn the pipeline off. And the richest country in Europe is Germany. Uh, two, less than two days ago, the vice chancellor of Germany said there is no replacement for Russian natural gas. And by the way, Russian natural, natural gas powers a lot of the electricity generating stations. I mean, literally, mm -hmm. Germany will go dark without Russian nat natural gas. Yeah, there's a number of other areas where... For example, the International Space Station, they've cut off. The collaboration to stop drug trade around the world has been cut off with Russia. Uh, this is very disastrous. It's also going to increase drug addicts everywhere, especially here in America and in Russia and elsewhere in Europe. Uh, well, I see this well, is just this, catastrophic this is, in every way. You, you have to, you know, look, the United States spent $5 billion of, of, of our tax dollars at a time when we're in a new economic depression to create this nightmare in the Ukraine. And Soros spent a lot of uh, the Rothschild money uh, to create this as well. And, I mean, this didn't happen overnight. It, it, there were planning going on for years and actions that took place over two or three years to set all this up. You have to ask yourself, well, uh, you know, the, the old Latin term, uh, who benefits, but why? Why are they doing this? What's, what's the strategic goal here? Is it... Uh, simply to grab the Ukraine, well, you know, even a moron can figure out if you go in Russia's backyard in a country that was part of Russia for well over 200 years, it's kind of like if you tried to take Virginia away from the United States, okay? If Russia came in and tried to seize Virginia, we might get a little bit upset over that. Okay. We might say, well, you know, if worse comes to worse, it'll be World War III, but you're not going to take it. Uh, and don't think the Russians aren't every bit as tough as we are. I know a lot of Russians, and, uh, you know, the Russians are really not bad people, they're, but they're tough. You don't well, mess yeah. with them. Well, I think here's the other thing is they have, they have geared their entire military system, including their first strike system and their weapon systems and their military, to take advantage of the weaknesses in ours. Uh, it's almost like, you know, playing a black, being a black belt. You, you hit the enemy in their weak points, you use their force to actually destabilize them, and that's exactly what Putin's doing. Uh, more and more, the more we interact with Russia, the more it destabilizes our economy. The worse it gets in terms of even dealing with drug dealers uh, and international finance and even the attack on the petrodollar. It's crazy. Well, yeah, and, and there are now two regions in the eastern, southeastern Ukraine that uh, have declared themselves independent republics. Uh, Donetsk right. is creating a people's army. Uh, to defend their, their region against the, the fascist coup government. And uh, things are definitely spinning out of control. I remember, oh, maybe a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, someone wrote in to my blog and said, ha oh, ha, you know, you said that uh, Ukraine's going to blow up and it could be World War III, and oh, it hasn't happened yet. Well, you know what? We, uh, virtually everybody hearing this, is part of the television generation. Right. And television, everything happens quick. And I'm as guilty as, as, as the next person. And Americans are far worse than Europeans. And I've done business in America and Europe, and believe you me, Europeans think we're nuts. And, of course, Americans think Europeans are nuts because they, they, they do everything so slow, except when it comes, when they want their money, then it's real quick. But... Uh, the fact is that major events like what's happening in Ukraine don't happen overnight. 
and there are multiple uh, players involved. There's a lot of people uh, behind the scenes in NATO countries all over that officially are supporting the NATO position, but are privately screaming to their prime minister, to their fellow members of parliament or fellow members of cabinets uh, throughout Europe and North America, that they're saying, hold it. We're, we're headed towards the Third World War. That means I can't play golf on Thursday afternoons. It means that uh, I can't drive my Jaguar. All the money I've taken under the table won't do me any good. Uh, I can't uh, spend the afternoons I like to spend with my mistresses. And my wife and kids and I are probably going to die. Now, you know... Uh, that would ruin your day, wouldn't it? Well, it might. Just, you know, a little bit, a little bit. So the point is that there are a lot of forces at play here, but the, at the highest levels, you have this, uh, this march towards the Third World War by the eight families that make up the global banking cartel, and Zionism. Zionism wants, their, uh, wants to totally control the Middle East, wipe out all their so-called enemies, and uh, all this it comes down to a spiritual battle uh, between Satan, the fallen Lucifer, and God. Between, I mean, what he wants is the destruction of the human race and the destruction of this planet. He hasn't been able to blot out the name of God, so, you know, his goal is to you know, just kill us off. And these, uh, right. these morons, these, uh, these puppets of, of Satan, are marching to his beat. And I maintain, and I, I, I would argue this with any uh, psychologist or psychiatrist, that any, uh, anyone, uh, no matter how exalted their, their position is, that wants the Third World War is clinically insane. Right. But they're beyond clinically insane. Insanity is one thing. Well, of course. But these people are, are clear-minded in their evil intent, which means we have to say they are fully indwelt and avatared by demonic transdimensional entities. So exactly. it's beyond insanity to being totally evil. And a lot of people have a, a, a kind of withdrawal. Like, oh, no, we can't say they're evil. They, they, they can't be clear-minded evil people who are hell-bent on systematically and with great intelligence prosecuting this whole mess. They are doing it that way. They're not just insane. Insane suggests someone who's so scattered and so unorganized that they can't possibly prosecute this. No, these are super intelligent people being run by transdimensional entities that are far beyond the intelligence of the mortal human mind. Well, they've accepted, uh, they, they've sold their soul to Satan. You know, they, they, they get to be big shots, they get to be senators, members of parliament, congressmen, presidents, prime ministers. They get to, uh, you know, live in palaces and ride around and hobnob with the wealthy. They get to make a lot of money on top of the table and certainly below the table. And, uh, you know, they get very full of themselves. But in the end, they're, they're embracing Satan. They're ignoring God. They're uh, killing people for profit, and that's what war is all about. And, you know, that's how you get into hell for eternity. That's not how you get into heaven. Uh, right. if, if you're so narcissistic that you don't care who you kill and how many people's, millions of people's lives are destroyed and ruined by the wars, the economic depressions, and so forth that you're helping to create, well, guess what? When it's your time to meet your maker, and your time will come, Believe me, it will come. Uh, you're not going to be very happy with the outcome because you're not going. You're you're so evil. You won't be able to accept being in heaven, even if God said, "Well, come on in." You couldn't handle it because the vibrational frequencies of holiness, of goodness, of love, aren't yours. Exactly. Amazing. That pretty well says it all, doesn't it? Well. Uh, I think this blood wound coming up, we're, we see, according to Mark Phillips, it doesn't set dates or scenarios, but all the evidence points to war and economic catastrophe led by our abominator in the White House. So, so Tim, uh, you have an article up here, very shocking, Ukrainian coup government hands a separatist, this is, in, of course, in eastern Ukraine, the 48-hour uh, deadline, what does this mean? And that was yesterday, uh, so it's about 24 hours late. Well, they're basically telling the uh, protesters that we're going to send the army in. 
and we're right. going to use military force against you. By the way, Russia, about two days before the coup government issued this uh, ultimatum yesterday, said, treat the protesters nicely, respect their rights. And uh, uh, the, the game that's being played, uh, uh, Russia is, is being painted by the Western media as uh, kind of Putin is a Hitler and Russia's uh, Nazi Germany, which is not the truth. Ru- Russia is a victim in all this. But yeah. uh, Putin is being very careful, and he's wearing but, a, but he uh, want to the, a velvet he glove. Want to but believe you me, under that velvet glove is steel. But he does want to have the buffer of the former Soviet republics, the satellite republics. So the fact is that I see uh, he's not completely sinless. I think that Putin oh, wants no. the Soviet Union back. <clears throat> and uh, But the thing is that the greater sinner, by a very large margin, is America and the bankers and Israel. And they'll do well, anything. You know, it's not America. And, and, and here's the problem. They always say America in all these articles. You know, they say U.S. Like I'm looking at one now on my screen. You have to send more fighter jets to Poland amid tensions with Russia. Okay, yes, the U.S. But you're an American. I'm an American. The majority of people, and of the millions of people listening to us right now, are Americans. Did we say, oh, yes, please send an army? We want to get into the Third World War. No. No, These are people we don't agree with his that are serving the interests of the, the eight families that own the global, uh, or, or that constitute the global banking cartel. They're serving the interests of the Zionists. This is not, nobody's serving the interests of it, America it, or Americans here. Why do we want to fight Russia? Well, Hell, let's get out of the, the no. economic depression we're in, put people to work. Uh, why do yeah. we need a, a, a global war, a third world war? Nobody well, in America it, wants that except a few idiots at the top. Well, if you just did a survey by email or text message, you'd find that there'd be 315 million Americans, about a half a dozen, uh, that would vote for the war, and the rest of the 315 million plus would vote, hey, are you crazy? Why are we doing this? Exactly. Uh, you know, you're cutting off money for the veterans, and you're going to send money to Al-Qaeda to do regime change in Syria that's eventually yeah, going to close Yeah, off. we're in bed with Al-Qaeda. I thought we went to war a couple times because of Al-Qaeda, okay. but now there are allies. So, oh, you know, and we're paying convenient. for these people to go and kill Christians. Our tax dollars are go- are paying these Muslim extremists to kill Catholic and Orthodox priests and and Protestant ministers because they're well, Christians. Our tax well, dollars. I saw the uh, Captain America movie last night, and they tried to make the story plot line not connected to a president, but the directors themselves, both the directors, said this was a slight against the kill list, but Obama, while it didn't have a president connecting there, had one guy in this thing called Project called Hydra. But they were planning on killing Americans from these space, you know, these uh, called upper atmospheric kill platforms with very accurate weapons that could target somebody right down to, you know, kill you right in your backyard or your bedroom. Uh, the reason yes, why we have can, drones all over but, America but, but, is... But you know, there's the, the, when you get into asymmetrical warfare, uh, Iran has one of the most sophisticated advanced biowar programs. And yes, we can wipe out Iran, and there won't be enough people left to bury the dead. But as we're doing that, they will message their uh, people throughout North America and Europe, uh, Abdullah, uh, it's time for you to uh, uh, you know, meet your 72 virgins. Uh, take yeah, the, you know your uh, before your refrigerator product in your freezer out and dis- distribute it at the local mall. Here, here's uh, a text message. It's time, it's, it, here's your text message. Abdullah, time for your prayer mat in front of your refrigerator. <laughs> and he knows the rest. Well, I, I, as I told you earlier, Bill, uh, the I have a report from a very good source, and I, I should have asked him if I could uh, mention his name, but I didn't, and so I won't. But uh, from a very good source that uh, certain American army reserve units are sending everything they can right now as quickly as they can to Eastern Europe. We right. can't fight a, a war. We can't go into combat without the National Guard and the Army Reserve. 
And if this report is correct, and I, I believe it is, yeah. uh, and these are one of the things, see, they don't announce this kind of stuff. Well, it's not a proof report, by the way. Without mentioning the name, this individual is a senior technical person inside the Pentagon. Okay? Not just a junior person or a journalist. This is a senior technical person for years inside the Pentagon. So it is a fact that they're doing this. Now, I think the first obvious thing is it's most likely war games. But again, you always have a war game if you want to make something go live. Just like 9-11 was a 9-11 game. and 7-7 in the UK and so Everything forth. Everything. Yeah, in Boston, when they were running a uh, anti-terrorism drill at the exact moment that the yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the bomb or so-called bomb went off, et cetera, et cetera, of course. Well, when you're and selling, you, when you're selling terrorism, well, you're going to say... Do this? this is so insane. You know, yeah. you, you come up against this and, and you say, my God, this is crazy. And maybe you should put the emphasis on my God, because maybe it's time to pray. I mean, this uh, is I crazy. So. This is demonic. Well, Tim, I think, um, why don't we say a little prayer right now? Dear God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we pray for our lost nation of America. We pray for all of our veterans who have died or paid a price or been injured. We pray for all those that are laying graves or not being treated with respect now, going to the very awful hospital system, having their benefits and their health care cut. We pray for the Pentagon that they, in a sense, do a soft coup or a hard coup against this monster in Absolutely. the White House. We, we pray that America dissects itself away from the banksters and against the Federal Reserve. We pray that we start collaborating with nations to treat them with respect so we can have a proper dialogue with them from strength, but not with a plan toward war. Uh, we want to have a dialogue that makes it possible for us to control the rogue nation of Israel so it doesn't trigger off war, but we can dissect or remove all the weapons of their so-called neighbors, including Israel, uh, that is out of control and ready to start World War III. We pray, Lord God, that you can intervene in the hearts of people, both the military personnel, the politicians and others, to realize no matter what evil they've done in the past, this is the end game. We want this is time to wake up. up. Yes. This is the time to wake up, to realize this is no longer a game. This is where, if you do survive, you'll be sequestered in an underground hotel. Yes, as you said earlier, you'll never see, uh, you necessarily, if your family isn't sequestered with you there, they're going to die. You never see your mistresses again. You never see your bank accounts again. You'll never drive your Jaguar. You're going to breathe, uh, basically, filtered air and live in an underground bunker, which will be horror. And within weeks, in fact, they said within two to three weeks after being one of these facilities, the rate of suicide goes astronomical. Even if they call them hotels, uh, they can sell it all they want. They have grand pianos, have shopping centers, have the pools, but being enclosed in miles of rock underground with a nuclear reactor and recycling system. We're about out of time, but amen, amen, amen. Yeah, praise God that this is the time for people to wake up. Thank you, Tim.